So let me ask you this. Um, of course, you've been doing it for so many years. You've gone through presidencies through this. <laughs> uh, so my question is, you know, throughout the years, there have been recessions. There's been, you know, spikes, all kinds of just the world changing and evolving. Um, how did you survive what we're just going to call the drought then? Um, when it came up through the years, what were some strategies and things you did to pivot times? That, that's a good question. Let me first back up a little bit and say that I, when I got into the business and, and, the, and things were hot, I mean, remember, this is 2004, 2005. So even 2006, I mean, by then I knew how to do a closing in 15 yeah. minutes, you know, I knew how to make the borrower feel comfortable to the point where they would sign off their first born. I could be in and out. Um, and I knew how to get repeat business from these same companies. I was their go-to. And it, it came to a point where I couldn't handle all the closings myself. So wow. the fact that Hatchet, Andre Hatchet got in and some other folks that I knew got into the business and I had to, you know, find other people that I didn't even know personally to help me out by using the same directories that I listed myself on. You know, it's one of those things where the demand was so popping back then, you know, and, and I'm going to use colloquial terms, you know, everything is everything right now, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to be myself on this one. So, you know, it was just, just hidden. And I'm like, all right. So I, I recruited some lieutenants with ludicrous dreams of getting some cream, you know? And I'm like, all right. So I was putting hatchet on. Not only did I put him onto the business, but I was also giving him business and I was cutting him checks. I had another guy um, who actually was, was Andre Hatchet's best friend. His name is Mike McGovern, who I still work with to this day. Hats off to him. But we kind of buddy buddied up, giving him business, like just feeding the flock, so to speak. And in 2007, 2008, all of that dried up. Like, and on top of that, I had signing companies that didn't pay me for the work that I had all these other people doing. So I owe them money and I'm not getting paid. So it was like double whammy, you know? So I'm just like, all right, I'm screwed. So. I had to fall back off of everything, you know, and I had to find a way with the little business that I was getting to pay off the notaries because I, I felt like, you know, just because I got screwed, that doesn't mean I should screw them. So I found a way to pay them up. And, you know, I just basically like fell back at, off of everything. And it just so happened that I was going through a divorce at the time. <laughs> and so let me tell you, for anybody who's getting a divorce, don't do it during a recession. It's the worst possible time. So I had to move in with my aunt. And it was like, I remember it was like a room. It was the size of a closet. And I was seeing my daughters every other weekend and, you know, just trying to make ends meet. And I just had to come to terms with things that I'm like, yo, this is just not working. You know, I still had to pay rent to my aunt, even though it wasn't a lot. You know, I still had to make sure she the utilities. And so I, at that point, I decided I had to um, expand my offerings and I had to do something different. Um, so I decided that I'm going to try to advertise and see if anybody just needs a notary, just to notarize a document, like a power of attorney, uh, just a simple document. Like we come to you, by appointment, 24 seven. That was my angle. I'm like, listen, if I got to get out of my bed in the middle of the night, which I did many times, I'll go and I'll notarize it. And back then, I'm like, all right, just give me 25 bucks, 35 bucks. I'm like, all right, I'll take, all right, give me what you got. <laughs> you know, I was so hungry for 
the money, I yeah. was like, yo, it's whatever. So, you know, I graduate from that and that still wasn't enough because now I got to pay child support, you know, even though we hadn't gone through the courts, I still felt the obligation to pay for my, my kids. I got two yeah. older, two daughters, you know, so with, with my ex-wife, so I'm just like, all right. And I remember that first Christmas, I, I just literally had to go to the dollar store and buy like pencils and just, just like stuff that had Disney on it. So my daughters were like, you know, like fascinated, but I just felt so, so like down. And at that point I started advertising general notary, you know, we come to you. And then when I was in a position to, I flew out to California and I ended up getting um, certified in fingerprinting because I couldn't find anybody locally to train me. So I flew out there, I got trained in fingerprinting. Um, and then I started advertising after skill services. So I was a one trick pony leading up to the recession. But after that, I vowed that I'm never going to be reliant on one source of income. 